Hello, welcome to Digital Farm TV Rural News. I'm Andy Walker. Winter crop production is forecast to increase by 12% to a total of 42.1 million tonnes this season. The Australian Bureau of Agricultural and Resource Economics and Sciences forecasts wheat production to increase by 17% to 26.2 million tonnes and barley to rise by 15% to 8.6 million tonnes. Abair's Executive Director Karen Schneider said that canola production is forecast to fall by 15% to around 3.4 million tonnes, noting this would still be the third largest canola crop on record. The report says that although winter crop production is forecast to rise, regional outcomes would vary significantly because of different seasonal conditions across the major producing states. The Cattle Council of Australia's membership this week overwhelmingly voted in support of a new model for national representation of grass-fed beef producers from next year. President Andrew Ogilvie said the new constitution would allow all Australian producers to take the opportunity to become direct members of the Cattle Council and contribute to the cause. The new structure was built on the foundation of widespread consultation with thousands of cattle producers Australia-wide. Former Howard Government Senior Cabinet Minister Peter Reith has slammed the federal government's decision to veto US company Archer's Daniel Midland's bid for Australian grain handler GrainCorp. Describing the decision as being all about agrarian politics, well-known economic dry Peter Reith wrote in the ABC's Drum Blog site that he was shocked at the news of the veto decision. Although technically the decision was made by the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, the call had Tony Abbott's fingerprints all over it, Peter Reith said. Just one day before Joe Hockey's Grain Corp announcement, major industry analyst Rabobank reported that improving efficiencies along the grain supply chain should be a key focus for the Australian industry. A new Rabobank report identified improvements to minimise supply chain losses and improve efficiencies, including increasing yields, improving road and rail logistics and creating economies of scale. Senior analyst Graydon Chong warned that if no action was taken to identify and address inefficiencies, Australia's export competitiveness would be eroded. While Australia currently held an advantage into Asia because of favourable freight costs, this was threatened by increasing volume coming out of low-cost producing areas such as the Black Sea region in Eastern Europe. Major irrigated cattle, biofuels and mining projects are set to spring up in northern Western Australia under ambitious plans backed by the state government according to the West Australian. Leading WA pastoralist Robin Mills plans to produce vast numbers of export cattle by opening up tens of thousands of hectares for irrigated agriculture on the fringe of mine sites. The project is reportedly attracting global attention with Belgian government representatives visiting Warrawajin Station on the edge of the Great Sandy Desert to assess the potential for a biofuels plant. Adelaide R&D consultant Dennis Mutton has succeeded Dr John Kennery as chair of the Pork CRC after Dr Kennery announced his retirement. Dr Kennery's departure marked the end of eight years as chair of the present CRC and its predecessor. Dennis Mutton is a consultant in resource planning and the development and administration of R&D. The four priority research programs for the Australian pork industry are reduced confinement of sows and piglets, herd health, healthy pork consumption and carbon conscious nutrient inputs and outputs. Finally this week, international scientists have discovered a wonder rice gene that could dramatically increase yields of one of the world's most important food crops. The International Rice Research Institute has found preliminary tests showing that yields of modern long-grain indica rice varieties 
can rise by 13 to 36 percent when infused with the so-called spike gene. Indica is the most widely grown species of rice in the world. Increasing the yield means growing more rice on the same amount of land using the same resources. Well, that's it for Digital Farm TV Rural News this week. I'm Andy Walker. Look forward to your company again next week. Bye.